All right, so our, what our next goal is going to be is we're going to make the great leap forward from, the, uh, from this basic uh, screen here to that more advanced screen here. We're going to get started now. Quick reminder, no eating in the lab, please. That's what the break is for. So what we're going to do at this point is um, we are going to do this the hard way. We are going to use... We're going to write code to get to this point, but what we're going to do is we are going to use a, uh, a framework that uh, gets us to the, um, the end result that we want to get to, and that framework is called jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is like a template, sort of, in that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to write an HTML document like this from scratch every time. We can sort of start with a template and then on top of that get to something like this. And this is not cheating, it's not a shortcut, well not a negative shortcut. It is a shortcut in that I don't have to write this code, the basic code, every time. I just start to create what I want to create. And what I said about the easy way or the hard way, well, there are, there's software out there, there's tools out there that will have us write the code for us really easily. But what we're going to do is, from scratch, one more time, we're going to create another document, but what we're going to do is um, work with jQuery Mobile right away. So let's go back to Notepad here. <coughs> let's go to File, New. We're going to make a brand new empty document and then we'll go to File, Save As. We'll save this to the desktop again. The Save As type needs to be Hypertext Markup Language, of course. And we'll call this um, Basic jQuery Mobile. Anything you want, actually. I'm going to call it Basic jQuery Mobile. So we're going to uh, create a very basic skeleton of a, of a framework like we did previously, and then we'll start to fill in the, the framework. We need to save our document first, of course. And again, uh, we're going to uh, create the very basic HTML5 compliant document again for practice. So remember how that was? We did the doc type. Remember that? Let's write that again, like last time. And we'll write the HTML tag, slash HTML. We did this last time. If you're new today, we'll just uh, follow along. Copy, the, copy these tags here. We need the head tag, the body tag, and within the head we'll do title. So let me give you a moment to, let me give you a moment to write that. Uh, if you're new today, just like I said, uh, write that, uh, write that down, and save your work, and then everyone else just write that. Let's create this very basic uh, template, and then we'll make it much more advanced. All right, so very, very basic 
HTML5 compliant file. And what we're going to do is then um, we're going to tap into jQuery Mobile. We're going to install jQuery Mobile into this. Remember last time when we um, added the picture. The picture was not on the desktop. The picture was on the internet. So we said image source is this picture on the internet. We're going to tap into uh, three files that are part of jQuery Mobile to be able to give us the capabilities that this exhibits. This is a web page. Obviously more advanced than what we did here. But this is a web page that has the ability to go from a home screen to an art screen. So the concept there. We look at one screen full of content, click a button, look at another screen full of content. We have these widgets that you can click and they open up. You go to another screen, you have this widget that you click and it slides over. All of this can be accomplished very easily by just writing really one word of code. If I want an, a screen to slide over, all I need to write is a command that basically says transition equals slide, and it slides. We don't have to program a seconds delay or a changing the canvas values and all of that. In order for all of this to make sense with a simple command though, we need to connect to three three files uh, that access that lets us access all of that. So we'll do that up here in the head. Um, we'll do it before title. So this is our basic skeleton here. Let's add um, right after head on, on line four. Let's give ourselves a new line four. What we're going to do here is add a link tag, but this link tag is one of the unique ones that does not have a pair. So just write link. What this will do is link our current document to a to the jQuery mobile CSS style sheet that's up in the cloud. So we're going to tap into a file that has the definitions for these gradients and these rollover effects and drop shadows and all of that so that we don't have to write our own code that says background color red, uh, text shadow, blah blah blah. It's all saved in this file. So inside of link though we need to have a, a um, an attribute here. So we'll write is uh, rel equals quote end quote. Right here we need to explain what relationship exists between the current file and the file we're linking to. The relationship, in quotes here, is that it's a style sheet. No space. This is a style sheet. After that rel, then we need to say, well, where is the style sheet? What's the address of the style sheet? So we'll say href. We saw that previously. When we were um, making a, a link, remember we had a link to my website, so href. And now here we're going to write it this big address, and again, we're doing it the hard way right now. I'll show you easier ways, but first we'll do it the hard way. So under the href, we're going to write http code dot jQuery.com slash mobile and here's the thing jQuery mobile has been around a few years now and it's been improving every few months or however long it takes they put out a new version just like a new version of uh, iOS or Android OS or, or Windows. The version we're going to tap into for the moment, one more slash, so it's mobile slash 1.4.0 slash again 
the actual file is jQuery dot mobile dash one point four point zero and we only have to do this once it'll hurt just once dot m i n dot c s s I'll go back to and read it in one more time in a moment but the point is here we're connecting to the CSS file that stores all the style of jQuery mobile, the, the gradients and all that cool stuff. So going back again, inside of the href, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery, j-q-u-e-r-y jQuery dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot zero. That's a zero, not an O. I say O when I mean O, I say zero when I mean zero. Slash jQuery again dot mobile dash one dot four dot zero dot min m i n dot c s s so hopefully you spell that right we're not going to see much of a result if we save and run it at this point. We're not going to get any error messages if there's an error here. We're going to find out if this really worked a little bit later. Again, I'll make this code available for you a little bit later. If it doesn't quite work, I'm sure it's going to be a simple mistake, simple misspelling. Again, honestly, we're doing it the hardest way possible. After we do it this way, then we'll do it a much easier way. But this will hopefully help you appreciate what, needs, what we need to do for some setup. Once we've got this set up, we have two more lines like this. Once we have this, then we'll be able to create a whole screen with basically one command. We can create a whole menu bar with two commands. We can make animations with one command. But we need to do some setup. The next line. Enter on the next line. So the way uh, jQuery Mobile works is basically it's a series of pre-made commands. jQuery Mobile is a subset of jQuery, which is a subset of, J of JavaScript. JavaScript, to kind of simplify it, is JavaScript is like, let's say, a thousand commands. jQuery is a hundred commands that let you do most of what J JavaScript does, but simpler. Instead of writing a huge command in JavaScript, we write a much more compact version in jQuery. So it saves us effort and time, and it can allow us to do a lot. And then jQuery Mobile focuses on using uh, or creating a mobile project. So the first line here, we're tapping into the style of it all. The next line here, we need to then tap into the actual JavaScript. So let's type the script tag, and this one does have a pair. So script. Script needs a source. You say, well, what script file are we talking about? And as I said, also kind of like the Russian nesting dolls. jQuery mobile is inside of jQuery, which is inside of JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to say here is let's tap into all the capabilities of jQuery. So the source will be http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com again. Uh, you, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to tab over just so that these are kind of underneath each other so you can see the difference. 
code.jQuery.com slash jQuery dash 1.10.2 dot min dot js So the first line up here was to tap into the CFS file. The second one is to tap into the JavaScript file of jQuery version 1.10.2 over on the server. Question? Yes. The order that we're writing them should be the order that they should be in the code, in this case. All right, next line. This is the last one. Oops, I mean next line after the slash script. Be careful there. So you have the, the script source slash script. Don't forget that. That one does have a pair. Script has a pair. We'll do another pair of scripts again. And we'll write that one in a moment, but I forgot to back up here. Uh, the code that we just wrote, code.jQuery.com like before, and then simply terminates at slash jQuery dash 1.10.2.min.js js and then we'll have um, the line of code for the jQuery mobile js file. It's going to look 99% like the CSS file we just wrote here but it will end in js. So actually we can save ourselves some effort and copy and paste instead of rewriting it. Let's try that, because uh, we might mistype it. What I mean is, your line uh, 4, everything inside the quotes, I'm going to copy everything there. So I'm going to copy everything inside the quotes. And then on the new script pair, line 7, that needs an, a source, quote, end quote, paste. But the difference is that it ends in .js. Again, we won't quite know if we typed this properly until we go a little bit further. But here's what I've got so far. Save it. Nothing very interesting happens if you run it, so I won't. There's nothing really to display. It's all in the head section, which doesn't display on screen, remember. What we're going to do now is start building screenfuls of content. Whereas on the first exercise, we just had one screen. Now we're going to build a, a, perhaps a home screen, a, a contact screen, a, a shop screen. All those three screens can exist in this one file. That's the cool thing about doing it this way of jQuery Mobile where you can have multiple screens of content all living in this one file. Um, on our title here, we'll just type uh, jQuery mobile or basic jQuery mobile page. I'm writing it like regular text because it's human readable.
And then now we'll move on to the body. Where we will start adding our first screenful of our website. Any questions so far? Okay, let's go to body. And now I'm going to introduce a new tag we haven't seen before. This is a tag, it's been around probably since around the beginning, maybe HTML 2.0 or so, uh, way back. This is the div tag. Let's add div slash div. Div is for division. Basically, this will divide uh, the screen into sections. Div. This has been around a while, but we're going to elevate it and give it new meaning now that we've got a connection to jQuery Mobile. A div is basically an empty, invisible container. You can put anything into it. So just like if I have a, a water bottle, or a bottle, I can put water into it, or orange juice, or whatever. That's like a div. I can put anything I want into it. And then I can style it with CSS, like give it a background color, give it border, roundness, drop shadows, etc. But because we've, we're using jQuery Mobile, we can make this behave as a whole page full of content. That's what we have here. Everything that I'm seeing in my example site is inside of one div. And then I divide a footer, I divide a header, I divide the main content. So we're going to use more than one div. But at least here we're going to have a div. And then we need to add an attribute here. We haven't seen this one before. It's data dash role equals quote end quote. Data dash role does not make any sense, does not do anything unless you have these three lines that we wrote up here. The jQuery mobile stuff. If you don't have jQuery mobile connections like we do, data role does nothing. It's ignored and your page will look plain black and white. No, this will run on a regular web browser. What we've done here, uh, which we'll see very soon, is we, we are making just a website. But what jQuery Mobile does is it translates that command basically into putting the proper margins, the proper background color, all of that. It is regular. It is a regular website. Maybe if it's a really old web browser, like Internet Explorer 6, or Firefox 4, you know, old web browsers. Maybe it might not work there, but this should work on pretty much every web browser. Yes? The, the earlier web page you created, the Hello World in Purple, mm -hmm. except for the photo that was on the internet, mm -hmm. that would run if we didn't have an internet connection. Yeah. But now that we're linking to jQuery on the internet, what we're doing now won't work if we're not connected to the internet. That's true, actually. That might have been part of your question. But yes, that's a good point. This is going to work because we have a connection to the internet. If we don't, then it won't work. But we'll talk about, let's download those files into our own folder so that even if we don't have an internet connection, it'll work. But for the moment, we're just relying on the, on the web-based version. Data role right here. Uh, so data role. We're going to see data role several times. Right now we need to define that whatever is inside of this div will be a whole page of content. So the data role is page. It's all lowercase of course, because it's standard HTML5. And notice what I've got here is a home page, an art page, a computer's page. All of these need to have a unique identifier so that we can go from page to page. So continuing here, we're going to write ID equals quotes, and then whatever we want to write here to, to delineate this from every other page. We're going to make this our home page, so let's just call this home, lowercase. 
no spaces. If you decide to call this home page, do not write home space page. You could write home page like that, no space, or home underscore page, but don't make a space there. I'm just call, I'm gonna call it home. The easiest thing to do is keep these things as short as possible so you don't make a mistake. All right, so here we've marked everything that follows is one page full of content. Question? So what exactly constitutes is data Can you say that again? <clears throat> what constitutes is data well, in a way, how we can write a complicated command that would normally take several characters in JavaScript, we can write it much more compactly in jQuery. Mm -hmm. This is sort of like that. We're taking something that would have been very complicated to, to design with CSS, and we're just writing data roll page, and jQuery mobile knows to put the proper amount of padding and space and all that. As for what conceptually it is, I'm sure there's a specific term for it that we can look up, but uh, it's basically the shorthand for creating a, a page of content. The data role can be reused for other things, which we'll see in a moment, but here we're using it for a whole page of content. Question? Well, is there a list somewhere of what that can be, like page or mm -hmm. box or I don't know, whatever? Mm -hmm. There is. We'll get to it. We're doing it the hard way first. Question over here. OK. Mm -hmm. So um, inside the div, let's press Enter, get inside the div. We're going to further divide up the page. We've said this whole thing is a page, when I want a header area, a content area, and a footer area. So that's going to be some more divs. Let's write a div pair again. So we're going to see this over and over. Divs to divide my document. And then with a, with a proper data role, then it gets a meaning. So we'll go back to this starting div here. Notice I tabbed it. Again, the tabbing is optional, but highly recommended so that this we know is inside of this, which is inside of this, which is inside of that. Can we uh, do a section and then div? You mean like just an empty space like that? Or section um, possibly since that would be HTML5 um, but we still need this data role so you can try section but we'll do it this way just so that it, we keep within the same sort of concept we'll keep it as div for the moment and this needs a data role again but this time the data role will be header So everything, uh, everything about the header will be within this div. That's what we're seeing here. The whole thing is div data role page. The stuff on top here is div data role header. The stuff in the middle, before the footer, will be div data role content. So we'll fill in the details in a moment, but let's make this skeleton. Uh, next line, another div pair. Remember, write the pairs first and then the details. Data role, data dash role, content. Yes? You don't find that you want an ID for anything? We only need an ID for the whole page, because once we jump from page to page, we only really need to delineate what page are we going to. We could add IDs to this for more complicated stuff, but this is all we need um, for basics. And finally, mm -hmm. we'll do one more division, the footer area. Same thing again. Div pair slash div. Data role, footer. 
does it need to have a specific word or can you just put in any word? No, these do need to be specific. These are reserved words that make sense because we have jQuery Mobile installed. If we didn't have jQuery Mobile, it would not pay attention. And even if we have jQuery Mobile installed, but we call this um, footy, that will not work because those words are reserved. Uh, I'm going to show you another website where it tells you all of the possibilities. Let's, uh, I think we, we just need to do one more little thing and then we can finally test what we've got to see if it's working. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll be on our way. But let's, inside of the, the header div, I'm just going to write, this is the header. And then inside the content, I'm going to write, this is the footer. Yeah, you can write a paragraph and all of that, but don't worry just yet. This is the content. I just want to see something because it's been a while since I even checked my work to see if it's working. So at the minimum, I want to write something. Okay, I think this is enough for the moment. What we need, save it and run it. And then we'll see what we get. All right, so if it worked, you might get something that looks like this. This is the header. This is the content. Here is the footer. Raise your hand if you got something like this. Be great. Question. Um, I remember the footer uh -huh. and it blocked all of that on oh. Is okay. there any way to, I mean, obviously it's asking, but is there a way that we can tell it not to do that? And, and What's, the reason it's happening is because Explorer sees that you, that this page is trying to link to an online resource and it freaks out. If this was online, it would be an online resource connecting to an online resource, so you wouldn't have that blocking. But here, because something from your desktop is trying to connect to the internet, it thinks there's a virus or something. So you won't really see that once it's live online, even on Internet Explorer. Question? Okay, just one moment. Now let me get a, a show of hands here. How many of you did it not quite look like this? How many of you need a little help? Okay. Um, what we'll do is... Let me um, answer a few of your questions so that you don't fall behind. Uh, so this is what my code looks like so far. I'm going to have it up here for a moment, and then I'm going to go help you out. Um, you can take a quick break, um, five minutes. Let me help a few people, and then uh, we'll go on. But if it worked, you should get something that looks like this. Let's just take a short break, and let's get this working, and then we'll go on. Raise your hand again if you need some help.
Alright, if you don't quite have it ready yet, I'm going to move on, but I'll give you the code, so let's move on at this point. 
if you got this, this is very cool, isn't it? All right, everyone, so we're moving on now, please. So if you got this working, then uh, the the thing that changes is, okay, now we've got these like little dividers of, uh, of content, uh, content areas. Well, that still doesn't quite look like that, but we'll be able to activate that pretty easily, as you'll see here. For example, um, notice I get these bars of, of color, okay? Well, I can change that. Notice that my uh, design over here is, is in dark tones. Look how easily we can change that. Let's go to line uh, 14, and where we've got the data role page and then the ID home, let's add another item here. Um, I'm going to add it before the ID simply to keep these data uh, elements together. We're going to add a new one called data dash theme equals quote end quote. Now we could have put the data theme after the ID, but what I mean is I'm going to put everything that is a data element together and then non-data elements. Everything that has data dash something means or makes sense when we've got jQuery mobile. Let's put data theme equals B, the letter B as in boy, save it and run it. Look at that. The same content is there, but we've changed the different theme. Now, we just have A and B, which is light and dark, but later on via CSS we'll talk about completely customizing it. But this is what I'm telling you. If we wanted to do this last time, we'd have to write a bunch of CSS and target this and target that. And what we did was wrote one thing, data theme B, and it did it to every element, the end. That's why, that's why we use something like jQuery uh, jQuery mobile. It allows us to to quickly get up and running to do things, do interesting things, useful things. Notice how on my example site there's a copyright and it's all the way at the bottom of the screen. Notice how it knows that even if I change the size of my screen it's always at the bottom. Right? It's always at the bottom. We can do that We can do that like this. Let's go to line 21, data role footer, and we'll add data dash position equals fixed. Data dash position equals fixed. save it and run it, and you should see what happens is that it automatically knows how much margin, how much space, etc. It keeps the footer at the foot without us having to know exact values or anything like that. So save it and run it. There it is, footers at the bottom. Notice uh, in the example, we've got a dark uh, theme at the top and the bottom. We added data theme uh, B, and everything inherited it. Well, we can target data theme to the different elements. Let's say my content area, I want it to be light. As I said, there's only A and B by default. So I want to change this center area to be gray or light. So that means we're going to change its data theme, the data theme of the content. So let's go to line 18, data-theme equals A. We didn't say A when we first did this and everything was light because the default is A. Then we explicitly said data-theme B so everything got dark. It inherited it all. That's the CSS. It's cascading top to bottom. And here we're overriding things. We're saying no, make it different. So the content becomes light. Now it doesn't go all the way to the bottom because there's only that much content. But we'll deal with that in a moment.
Now also what I'm doing is, uh, and this is optional, but I'm usually resizing my, um, my web browser a little bit tall and thin, kind of like a mobile device that's optional, and you can have it stretched out like that if you want, but I like having it this size like a, uh, like a mobile device. Um, let's add, um, let's refine things a little bit more here. Um, we didn't add any, uh, any markup to the content in each of these sections. We just wrote, this is the header. We should actually have some semantic markup, some meaningful markup. Basically, H1 or paragraph or that sort of thing. So let's say that on the header, actually we want an H1. So wrap the H1 tag around the header text. And then wrap an H2 around the content in your content. And then an H4 on the footer. <coughs> Why did I choose 1, 2, and 4? Well, again, the hierarchy of things. So when I give you this, when I give you the syllabus, there's H1, there's H2. If I had something at the footer, H4, and I might have an H3 in the middle. So H1, 2, 3, 4, the elements of the of the hierarchy. So I don't have any any extra content in 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 the content area. So I don't have an H3. I'm gonna possibly use H3 later. So I know that I'm going to have h4 in the footer. Save it and run it and see how things change a bit. The reason for that is, again, this is where the reason things look like this is because of the CSS file, that jQuery <coughs> mobile.css file. The reason things are placed where they are is because of the meaning of the div, the data role, and that's because, again, the CSS file and also the JavaScript files. So mixing all of that together, we get this. Here's before. Before was that, notice this text right here is, is touching the edge. By adding h1, it centered it automatically for me, gave me a little bit of breathing room at the bottom here, too. The content area in the middle looks a lot bigger. Depending on the size of your, of your web browser, are, you, are any of you seeing that it gets cut off? If your web browser is maximized, you're not going to see that, but if you've got it on the edge like me, it'll cut off. And what's happening there is that the default behavior of jQuery Mobile is to give us a certain amount of space at the top before it cuts off. Later on we'll talk about giving us more space so that it doesn't cut off our text. Notice it's a little bit more ample at the bottom. It didn't cut it off there. But notice all of this style that went in for us. It's hard to see on my projector, but there's a little dividing line and a very subtle gradient there. Uh, at the top as well. Let's say we want uh, some more content here uh, inside the this is the content. After that we'll add a paragraph. So let's go inside of the content area after the heading 2. And just so that I have some content, I'm just going to write some gibberish. Just fill it in with a couple of uh, lines of gibberish. Remember, even though I'm pressing enter, it's not going to make more paragraphs. I'm just putting content in there. Right, just some content. Notice how that also gets inherently a, a design, a style. Uh, it has a, an, a default amount of margin on the left and the right, and below that, and so forth. We'll be able to edit that, of course. But notice how quickly 
you know, the speed bump of writing these lines of, uh, of, of, J of jQuery, yeah, that took a moment, you might have misspelled it, but then we're able to create content very quickly. Here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll make a link, and we'll link to a brand new page, a second screen full of content. This is the home page. Let's say we're going to link to an About Us page. So after the paragraph of that gibberish, uh, let's add another paragraph. It'll just be one line long, so I'll keep it like that if you want. And I'll say go to page, go to about page. And what I want is when someone clicks, um, when someone clicks this, it's going to go to a new page. So that means we need a, a link, like we did last time. So what's the, the link tag again? The A tag. So wrap the A tag around that word that we made, or that sentence, go to, page, go to about page. This is going to need an href, like we did previously. And now here's the trick. This whole screen <coughs> data roll page is called home. We're going to link to the about page. Actually, the pound about page. You need a pound symbol there the number symbol, the hash mark, whatever you want to call it, pound about, let me lift this up here, pound about, and that's going to create a link that takes us to the about screen. Mm, what about screen? We haven't made one yet. So what we'll do is we'll copy and paste this whole page that we made and repurpose it so we don't have to type it all again. It seems to be working. We're going to copy and paste this whole page, repurpose it for the About page. So what I mean is, you need to uh, select. You need to select the div, which is line fourteen to line twenty-nine. The whole div data roll page. We need this whole skeleton because this defines the page. This defines the header, the content, the footer. We can type it all again, but I'm going to select it all. The whole div, slash div, of data roll page. I'm going to copy that. And then after the div, but before the slash body, press enter a couple of times just to break it apart visually. So copy the whole div up here and paste it before the end of body. Get an exact copy, of course, which we need to update. Specifically, line 32. It's still a page, so it's still div data roll. We'll keep it. Actually, we'll change the color back to A, just to see that something is different here. And definitely change ID to about, not pound about, just about. This is all we really need. Save it and run it. See how it works. This one is line 32. The first line where you've pasted your new uh, above header, the first line where you've pasted the, the copy of your whole data roll page. Because you remember we had data roll page for the home screen and we copied and pasted it and now we have data roll for data roll page for about. Let me see if mine is working, and then I'll explain what happened. So this is my home page. I've got the button, I've got a link that is that says go to about page. I click that. 
In what change the calendar out. In what way? To home. Yep, you're thinking ahead. So if you go to the second page, I can only tell that I'm in the second page because it changed color. We can do a few things here. We're going to say H1. This is on the About page. Now we have to think in, in more than one, as more than one element. This one HTML document can hold many pages many screenfuls of content. It's like this book right here. It's one book, but it's got many pages. This one HTML file is this, and every page, here's the home page right here, and now here's the about page within the same document. They all need a unique ID. And then we'll just change the content. Page 2. I'm putting that on the header. This is page 2 content. Maybe write some different gibberish. Here is the page 2 footer. And then this says go to about page. Well, we can make that say go to home page. And therefore that link needs to go where? Pound home. So that's why the pages have a, this unique ID. This is how we can navigate from screen to screen. They need a unique ID. So you cannot have two pages called home because then we wouldn't know which home to go to. And then you need to write the pound symbol in the href only. You don't need the pound symbol up on the ID. That's just the way it is. So I changed a little bit of that content. I'm going to... Uh, run it. So I know this is the home page because it's the it's the one that's with the dark theme. I'm going to click go to about page. I know I'm in the page two because I've written page two content. Go to home. Back to home. Question. All right. Let me bring back my code here. So that's my code there so far. It's allowing me to go from page to page. Um, that skeleton of div data roll page allows me to create screenfuls of content. And that's all because thanks to jQuery mobile.
or else maybe you can make the order is the same as you have. And of course, the person who somebody selects a person that's in the All right, everyone, let's move on, please. So, um, hopefully, you're seeing. <laughs> hopefully, you're seeing that if there's any error or mistake, it's probably just one little misspelling. That's why I'm going to give the code at the end of the day. And it's also good that you help your neighbors, but remember, it's good that you help your neighbors, but remember also a little quieter, please. So, um, what we're going to do now is uh, a little bit more about, well, we've got this jQuery mobile, and it's really cool. What else can we do with it? Look at this. We've got this link, a plain old link that we learned before. Now what we can do is upgrade the link to, to be a button. So let's do that. Let's go back to, again, now we have to think about which page are we on. We've got a home page and about page. 
And the way we keep track of that is with the ID. So if I say, let's go to, I'll, I'll often say, let's go to data role page home. I should probably just say, let's go to the home page or the about page. But I usually say, let's go to data role page about. So we'll go to our data role page of home. And currently, our button is right here, ahref pound about. Well, because we've got a connection to jQuery mobile, we can add a new attribute to the to the a, to the anchor tag, and the anchor tag has been around since HTML 1.0. But now we'll add a data role button. Save it and run it and see what happens. So add data role, data dash role equals button to your href, your plain old link. If you spelled it right, you should see that it upgrades it to a button with rounded corners and drop shadows and rollovers. There it is, look at that. So I, uh, I upgraded it did that. Now it's like a button. Well, let's look at a few more things that we can do uh, to this button. Right now it's a plain old button, but we can add some more data elements. Okay, everyone, remember, if you have a little bit of help, you can uh, raise your hand and I'll help you out. If you're going to help a neighbor, please be a little more quiet. But uh, what we're going to do here, uh, let's add some more data content. Uh, this looks kind of boring. I would like an icon. So let's add data dash icon equals quote, end quote. And again, the question has come up a couple of times. Well, how do you know what to write here? What are the possibilities? I'll show you what the possibilities are in a moment. Data dash icon is one thing we can add here. And then we've got a list of 40 built-in icons. And then, of course, we can add our own icon. Let's try this one. Let's try um, uh, this one is um, edit, quote, end quote, edit. What does that do? Save it and run it, and see what icon appears. Data dash icon equals edit. I get a little pencil. Here's another one you can try. Um, type user. If you type user, what happens? Data icon equals user. You get a little, little user icon. All right, try this one. Use uh, data icon equals um, gear. So as I said, there's like 40 of these. I showed you um, edit is a pencil, user is a little face, gear, there's a little house in here. Anyone think, anyone guess what the house is? Home, you can do home, you have a home. One more, try, um, Print? Let's try print. Print doesn't work. If something doesn't work, it just doesn't show up. But uh, here's one, cloud. So think about when you're, eventually you're going to develop your own app. You're going to have different screen folds. Together we're going to work on an app, and as I said, I recommend you work on the app I'm going to work on, and then of course build your app. 
but we're going to want to have a way to people to send an email. So maybe I want to have a little mail icon. I think mail is one, or maybe email. Let me try mail. Uh, yeah, mail. So let's say we will have a button to send an email. I've got a mail icon built in. Let's say I want, um, we're going to do this definitely, we're going to have turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigations. We're going to have a real live Google map. <laughs> that one is going to be navigation. Navigation. Again, I'll show you the list of all possibilities. But here it's, you don't have to be an artist. You have built-in 40 icons to use. And of course, if you are an artist, I'll talk about how to use your own icon. Your own colors. Because right now we've only got dark uh, design light design. We want purple design. We want purple and pink. We'll be able to do that a little later. And again, to be to do this with plain old HTML would have taken us the whole five weeks. And we did it in what? An hour. Because we're using jQuery Mobile as this as this foundation. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Question. Yeah, can we add the style of the right in the this, you mean like add more, add style, and do more to it? Yeah, we can also add style well, and... Within this, you can say, you can say style maybe for something and uh, add on this. Yeah, so. we can, but this gets into the issue that we saw briefly when we had our H1 not obeying the text align center. Mm -hmm. That more, more likely than not, if we try to do that, it'll probably conflict with other styles that are taking over. We will be able to make this do exactly what we want, but at a certain point it'll be kind of like wrestling a little bit with it because we're trying to force it to do something that it that the default doesn't want it to, but we can make it do it. So, for example, I want to make this color go all the way down. Why isn't it going all the way down? That's stuff that we need to deal with as we, as we get a little bit more advanced. Uh, but the default behavior is that the color ends at that point because because we've said the content, what happens is we've said data theme A to the content. Well, the content is only as long as what's in the content. Uh, I want everything back there to go further. We have to do it in a little bit more complicated way, but uh, we'll be able to. Um, let's look at, okay, let's look at a few more cool things we can do here. Um, Continuing with our new, our newly minted button, data roll button, data icon. Here's another thing we can do. Um, let's say uh, let's say we want to do um, data dash inline equals. Some of these will make sense. Some of them not. Again, I'll show you the list of all possibilities. We're going to use most of them. Data dash inline. This one takes a value of true or false. And the current default is false. So let's put true, data inline true. See what happens. Data dash inline true. So try that out. Tell me what happened. What do you see happening? Data dash inline true means it shrinks, it's inline, it doesn't take up all of the space anymore. A moment ago, it was stretching out as far as it could and took up all the space for itself. It's, it's like if you're used to, uh, with CSS, with block or with inline, that's basically what it's doing. It's no longer taking up the whole space. Now there's some space to put something next to it. It doesn't take up the whole space. Um, one more. One more thing here. Data dash icon POS doesn't stand what you doesn't stand for what you think. It stands for position. Data icon position. Do we want it on the left, which is the default, or do we want it on the right? Data dash icon position POS icon is on the right. Here's an interesting thing, data icon pause right, we can do data icon pause equals no text. And now my icon only has, my button only has the icon. 
So I started with a plain old A tag, invented in 1989. And then we updated it with jQuery Mobile, invented in 2010 or so. We upgraded the href to be a button data dash um, uh, data role button became a button. And then with these other little attributes, we did more stuff to it. For example, no text gives me just the icon. It's ignoring the text, yeah. The text is still there, technically, uh, but it's just ignoring it. It's displaying it in a certain way. So if you want to do that, that's nice. If you don't, well, I'm going to put it back to right, or whatever you want. If you omit it completely, because there's defaults, of course. The default is data icon position left. I don't want it, actually. I want it to stay on the left. But if you wanted a very simplified icon, just the icon, it's no text. So I removed it. I removed it. You can if you want to. So this jQuery mobile is pretty, pretty powerful. We've tapped into all of these capabilities. Uh, here's another one. Um, this one is um, data dash rel. When we saw rel briefly earlier, we had um, the style sheet. At the very top, we had link, rel, style sheet, and then the style sheet. We said the relationship between this document and the link is that that's a CSS file. Here we're saying something sort of similar. What's the relationship between the thing we're about to click on with this current screen? And inside of here, we'll write dialog. We'll write it dialog this way, not the other way. Dialog. Save it and run it, and you won't see anything different, but click on it. See what happens. Data dash rel equals dialog. Run it. What happens is if you click on it, the relationship between this page and the other page changes. You get a pop-up box, a dialog box. And look at this with an automatic close button. I didn't write that. The behavior is that something that has data rel dialog is that the next page will act like a pop-up with a built-in close button. So we don't even need that go to home page anymore. Well, question here first. Yes. Yeah, mine is doing the same behavior. It's going to the uh, next page, but uh, I did uh, kind of a fading in and fading out. So it doesn't it doesn't do it like this. How I? Yeah. Huh. So in the tag. No, it's well, it's going to the second page. But, uh, I think mine is too. Let me just look over your shoulder. Did you spell it right? to the right side of the screen, not just within the button? Yeah. There is a, and um, um, you could definitely use some CSS. Um, you know how we had text align center? We could do text align right. We could also work with margins and, and that sort of thing. There's lots of ways to do it, but you can try um, text align right. And you go ahead. So if the whole site, jQuery site, would get something, it would actually type just the numbers. It would. Question. If there was a, a, a dialogue pop up, shouldn't you be able to just click on the header and drag it off to the side a little bit? 
You could, but think about it. No, but think about it that um, I've got my, for example, my tall and thin, like a mobile device. There isn't much real estate oh, for me yeah. to move that out of the way. If uh, that's our, our our goal eventually, if if I had a tablet that was that big, perhaps I would want to move it up to the side to see something behind it. There's other ways to do that. The default is that it takes over the current screen. Okay, so we've got we've got uh, this this document that uh, just at the beginning of the day. Remember, we were at uh, we were at that, and now we're at this. And again, it's all based on HTML. It's a few new things, but the biggest thing is that we've got these lines at the top these um, links to CSS and JavaScript. And the question was, again, to reiterate that, yes, because we are connecting to online resources, we need a connection to the internet. So if you pull the plug right now on your computer, then your screen will suddenly look plain. It'll look, uh, it won't work anymore. Just a moment, it'll look like that. So if the internet went down, it would look like that. All the thing would be just there, naked, without any adornment. It's because of those connections to the CSS files and the jQuery files that this works. So, of course, we'll talk about, when we make this an actual app, we'll talk about how to prevent that, how to make an app that is not necessarily, not necessary to be connected online. And in short, it's basically putting these online resources in the same folder. But we'll do it when we get to it. Question? Uh, yeah, he was, uh, I have error, and I don't know where it's at. <laughs> error? Like, uh, he doesn't see the same thing when you click on the second page of those. Okay, we're going to get to lab time in a moment, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely catch you up. It's probably just a simple uh, misspelling somewhere, but we'll, we'll, we'll find it. Um, what I want to, to say then is how important those, uh, those three lines of code are. And now, uh, as I've said, well, uh, it seems like I have this off the top of my head and I was remembering and I was doing it all. Well, no, I had it all written down right here. I'll show you where this is at, actually. I'm getting this from the Wikipedia article. Let's go look at that. Let's go look at the... Um, but I'm not cheating because I helped write that article. So... Um, Let's go to the web browser. Let's go to Wikipedia. And that's the thing that I'm trying to say, that with programming and this stuff, it's complicated. You don't have to have it all memorized. You just need to know where to look for it, uh, where it's saved, where you can look it up again, and then refresh your memory. Uh, so w there's two places where we'll get this jQuery info. One of them, the first we'll look at is Wikipedia. So let's go to Wikipedia. And then uh, down here, search for jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile. This will take you to the article. jQuery Mobile is a touch-optimized web framework, additionally known as a JavaScript library, currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a wide variety of smartphones and tablet computers, made necessary by the growing but heterogeneous tablet and smartphone market. The jQuery mobile framework is compatible with other mobile app frameworks and platforms such as PhoneGap, Work, Lite, and more. So basically it's a framework, it's a template, so that we can start to create a touch-friendly uh, website, web project. It looks nice on a web browser, but eventually that will be made into uh, an app, and so uh, we're going to design an app. It's going to need to have buttons and headers and navigation elements instead of making it all from scratch. We're going to use jQuery Mobile, style it to our will, and it'll be our app. And then it's going to go on top of PhoneGap, which will take this humble web project and then be able to tap into the camera of the device the GPS, the phone contacts, the vibration, the sound, all of that. Something that's not on a website. 
you can read the article on your own, but you'll see that uh, it was last updated. They're actually on version 1.4.3. Remember on our code we were writing 1.4.0. 143 is the newest one. Um, Etc. What else here? So features compatible with all platforms, etc. It works on everything. Here's an example usage of one thing. This is a little bit more basic jQuery. Might look familiar. You know, there's a there's a div on screen somewhere. You tap it, and a, and a pop up will happen. We'll do something more complicated later. But if you scroll down, a basic example. This is what we did right now. So if you scroll down slightly different, but here's what we did. There's the link rel style sheet pointing over to the 1.4 code. There's the data role page, first page, data theme A, fixed, etc. The content and such is a little different, but there's a page one and a page two. They didn't do the, the pop-up dialogue trick that we did, but here's a basic example. They put the scripts at the bottom. It's not quite necessary to go into why. Then it talks about theming. This actually needs to be updated. It's still talking about the uh, themes A, B, C, D, E. Those are no longer in effect. The version 1.4 branch only the 1.4 branch only does A and B. The 1.3 branch will do A, B, C, D, so this needs to be updated. If you want to be uh, internet famous, you could go in here and update it. Um, so just read here that it works on all platforms, basically, etc., etc. But that's the example, the example that we did right now with, with some modification I got from Wikipedia earlier. Just printed it out. That's what we did. Uh, when we come back next time, we're going to take a different approach, but we're going to continue to work with jQuery Mobile. I'm not going to force you to write this code by hand again, or even copy and paste. We're going to use another tool, a little bit of software that will help us drag and drop the elements where we need. It will write the code for us to a point and then we're going to take over and write the code how we how we need it to be. Because a tool like, let's say, what I'm going to show you, or, or Dreamweaver, or something like that, will write a lot of it for you, but it can't do it all. So instead of us starting from scratch again, we're going to start with, a, with this software that I won't reveal just yet, but I guess if you look in the syllabus it is. And then when we, when we, when we get back next week we'll go forward and learn more about developing this app uh, always with an eye toward the example page remember everything that we that we're, we've got here we will do like that animation I didn't talk about how do you go from screen to screen with an animation but if you do a little research you can find out or we'll talk about it next lecture so what I want to do is take some final general questions and the lecture I'll put my code in the network folder, and then I'll take uh, individual lab time questions. But any uh, general questions at this point? So let me save this into the folder. Question? Yeah, sorry, if you can maybe with a notepad plus plus, just explain what all the colors mean specifically. Okay, just one moment. Let me save this. Into the, into the folder. So uh, in the network folder, just to remind you, the network folder on the computer, in the Z drive, we did this earlier, but um, now I put, I put the September 4th file, which, is, which was the basic HTML file, and then my basic jQuery mobile file. I put it in there into my folder, Campus uh, Android 1. You can copy those if you want. That's my work up to this point. And the thing about uh, the color coding and such in, uh, in Notepad++ actually is that it's completely arbitrary. It doesn't exactly have a meaning. It's just that, for example, everything that is a plain old tag is that shade of blue, and everything that is perhaps an attribute is that purple. The reason that I say it's arbitrary is because we can go up to the settings here and say, I want it to be in the style of mono-industrial. And now it's another color. So the colors don't matter, really. It's just to quickly tell, here's my divs. And depending on the theme, some colors are better than others. 
let me show you what I did here because some of you might want a different color configuration. Um, if you're in Notepad, go to Settings menu. Notice the default colors, white background, and then this color text. This is actually not one of the better color environments because there's too much white. It tires your eyes. It's better to work with a dark color. So here's how you can do that. Go to Settings, Style Configurator. I don't think configurator is a word, but go to Style Configurator. And at the top here, it shows Select a Theme. For example, I had a moment to go Mono Industrial, and it's got the color coding. And you can set your colors here. Whenever there's any sort of uh, margin, use that color. If there's a style here, use that color. So Navajo carrot color. Oops, I mean uh, deep black. So any color combination that works for you, Vim dark blue. That's familiar. If you use any any theme, like this one stands out a little bit more, perhaps. Notice these are pink. All the attributes, all the all the values of the attribute are pink. That way, I can get at a quick glance. Attribute, value, 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 value. All of the things that are IDs stand out as red right away. Every normal tag is purple. Notice it doesn't quite recognize data role, but you can define your own style. Wherever there's data role, make it yellow. So you have a variety of options to choose from, but if you're a real programmer, you're going to choose this style. <laughs> Any other general questions? All right, so I'm going to wrap up the lecture at this point. Uh, we're going to do some lab time. If you need some individual help, call me over. I'll help you out. Make sure that you signed in. You don't need to sign out, but make sure you signed in. Printed your name, actually. I see at least one name that's a little hard for me to read. Make sure you printed your name on this, please. And uh, if you are new today, make sure you enrolled in the class. If you're not sure, check with me because I do. You know, you have a seat because you should be enrolled. If you're not enrolled, you can't have a seat. So make sure you're enrolled. Check with me if you're not sure. That's the lecture for the moment. Thank you for coming, and I'll be here until 9.30.